Okay, let us go to the word of God. I am going to speak with you about a very precise heading. But let us go to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 10. If we may, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 10 maybe. We just understand a little bit the story of what is going on. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on the head and kissed him and said, It is not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance. When you have departed from me today, you will find two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin and Zelzah. And they will say to you, The donkeys which you went to look for have been found, and now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, what shall I do about my son? Let us go to verse 9, and we read also verse 10. So it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your wonderful word. Speak to us today one by one. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me greet you again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I am going to speak under the heading, Take Your Destiny. Take Your Destiny. I'll try to be short and precise. Please pray for me so that I can explain these things just quick, quick, and so that we can finish in time. Hallelujah. Our time is gone already. We are going to speak about the heading, Take Your Destiny. Where we have just read, we have, speak, we have heard about a man that went out to go and search for his father's donkeys. Let me say so. He went to search for them because they were lost. And then he went around searching for them. Searching for them and searching for them. Until on the way, somebody said to him, There is a seer where we can go so that he may direct us and tell us so what is it that we have to do because we are not seeing the donkeys. And uh, this man, Saul, went there with his servants and the men that he was working with to Samuel the prophet so that when they reach there, maybe uh, Samuel will tell them about the donkeys. <clears throat> now, where we have read, the Bible is telling us that uh, when Saul reached where Samuel was, instead of Samuel explaining about the whereabouts of the donkeys of his father, the prophet Samuel told Saul about his destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, we are yet to find our destinies. We must find our destiny. Now, when Saul was with the prophet Samuel, he went there because he was distressed. He went there because he was worried. He went there because something bad has happened in his family. His father was worrying about his asses. His father was worrying about the donkeys. And he sent a son, believing that a son will find the whereabouts of the donkeys. Not knowing that when Saul moved out of his father's house, because of the problem that they were having, Paul, uh, Saul was going to found his own destiny. In other words, in this life that we are living in today, there are things that we meet along the road, along the way, that make us to go somewhere where we can found or find our destiny. Like when we are here in the house today, we are here.
Because there is something that brought us here. Am I right? Can you ask the person that is close to you, what is it that brought you here? Now, when you are here as a child of God, remember, we are born again, we are children of God. But we are still to find our own destiny. We are here because we want God to say something to us or something about our lives. We are here because we want God to change our lives. We are here because we want God to do something about the situations that we are meeting along the road in our lives. But let me tell you something. Because you are here, you are yet to find your destiny. And this is where you are going to find your destiny under the umbrella of God Almighty. Now, when Saul met Samuel, his expectations were or were, I am going to be told about my father's donkeys because my father is worried donkeys are lost. But when he reached there, Bible Yakairi, the prophet took oil and anointed him. And when he anointed him, he said, is it not that God has chosen you to be the leader of his nation? Isn't that God has chosen you seated there to be a leader of your family? Isn't that God has chosen you to be what you are supposed to be in life? What you are meeting along the road is not because you are so bad. It's not because your situation is better than anybody else. Papa loves to say, daddy loves to say most of the time. The bigger the challenge, it means the bigger the assignment. Now it means all the problems that you are facing today, it is because there is a purpose in your life, there is a destiny that you have to accomplish. If the donkeys were not lost, Saul was not going to know that he is a leader of Israel. So now the donkeys were supposed to be lost first and then the anointing was supposed to then come. Eh? When you are supposed to be beaten up and battered up by life so that you can run to the house of the Lord. And when you reach the house of the Lord, that's where the anointing of the Lord will start functioning in you. Amen. If you are still your own self, self, huh? reasoning according to your own capacity, reasoning according to your own understanding, I believe uh, Saul, when he moved out of his father's house, he said, Papa, don't worry. I'll come back with them. Hmm? Don't worry, Didi. I'll come back with them. You know me now. Maybe they were lost some time ago and he said, I'm going there. I'll come back with them. Don't worry. So now I'm half it among prophet Samuel. When he reached the prophet of God, the Bible says the prophet took oil different assignment altogether. This man, remember, he was searching for donkeys. They are not eaten. They are not meat. They just help us to carry our things. So now, this man was searching for donkeys. And when he was searching for donkeys, he found his destiny. Hallelujah. So now, I want to speak with you today. Everything that you are encountering in life today is leading you to your destiny. Unless otherwise you go to the house of the Lord, you will never find your destiny. Huh? Our destiny, Basalwan, children of God, is not found in our own intellectuality. Our destiny it's not found in our wisdom. Our destiny is not found in our own knowledge or our own thinking. Our destiny is found is in the hands of the prophets of the Lord. And if you can find one who is walking according to the will of the Father, you will find your destiny. Yeah. We are not here on earth to stay. We are just passing. So one day when you pass here on earth, you must be having a home that's point number one. The second one is when you are still living here on earth, you must know what is it that God wants to do with your life. 
as you are supposed to be a woman of God like me. No. Maybe just to help the people that are around you. But you can never find that if you didn't go or don't go, where you will find a man of God that is led by the Spirit of God so that he can reveal to you what is it that you have to do with your life when you have changed your life to become a Christian so that you can be beneficial to the people that you are living with. If I can come to you, Mama, and say, you are going to be president. If I am a true one, if you got some money, I'm age sixty. I have to tell you seventy. Before you become a president, you will never pass. You will never go. Why? Because it was said from God Himself. So now, as we are gathered here, as children of God, we have to find our destiny. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you are here because you have to find your destiny? That problem you are having. It's making you to find your destiny. Okay. Mara loko so ela so tsuka na swa yelo na ti raise itambona ke akireke ene loko u fika akireke ni u yimisa na maboka ntlula maboka abantu bangwane hinkwa you know there are things that are happening in our lives because god loves us hallelujah the lord is leading us to his house or when you feel the heaviness of the burden that you are having, you will run to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, this song, as we are read down, we are reading, reading, reading. The Bible says, the minute he stood up from the man of God, his heart was changed. I don't know the kind of life he was living before. But what I know is Saul, when he left the house of the men of God, his house, his heart was changed. In other words, God changed his thinking. God changed his understanding. God changed his perspective. God changed his doing. And when you read going forward, it says, everything that the prophet told him that is going to happen, it happened. And now, the one that is so, ex so, so exciting and amazing is, when he was going on the way, he met prophets. And when Saul, who was searching for donkeys, met prophets, the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And Saul was found among prophets prophesying. Now it means, children of God, when you have to find your destiny, number one, your heart must change. I'm not the changer. The one who changes the heart is God. Number two, the spirit of the Lord must come upon you. And when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, what I know is, you no longer do things the way you were thinking. You no longer speak the way you were thinking. You were speaking. You no longer uh, do things around you the way you used to do them. I believe even those servants that were working with him, when they started seeing him prophesying, they were amazed. He went around beating up people. Who knows? His history and geography was not written. But what I've heard only is Saul was among the prophets prophesying because of the spirit of the Lord that came upon him. 
Hallelujah. So I want to tell you children of God. If you want to find your destiny today. You must allow the spirit of God to direct you. Amen. You must allow the spirit of God to work in you. Amen. You must allow the spirit of God to monitor your steps and teach you how to do things. Because I understand when you are a prophet, you don't speak things that you know, you speak things that you don't know. Yes. Am I right? Yes. When you are a prophet, you speak things that are still yet to come. You don't go according to your mind and according to your own understanding. You go according to what God wants you to say. So in other words, if you want to find your destiny, child of God, you must go and do things according to how and what God wants you to do. You must not do things according to your own understanding. You must not do things according to your own uh, ability. You must not do things according to your own ability. Let us go forward. Let us look at the life of Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 2. I'm not going to read. I just want to explain so that you may understand. So that you may not understand point number three. If you want to reach your destiny, you must never forget where you come from. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Don't forget where you come from. Mm -mm. Don't forget where you come from. You know, we have a very serious problem. I will say it right here in Charis. A very serious one. When people get what they are searching for, they forget where they are coming from. And there is still a lot that God wants to do in their lives. The problem is they don't know. Hmm? When we get our healing today, we then forget. I'm not saying come to Charis, but there are a lot of churches where you can go where you stay. Go and worship the Lord like you are crazy, like you don't want to worship him tomorrow. Go on with your salvation. Find the Lord. Allow God to change your heart. But don't forget where you are coming from. That is why we are not finding our destinies. Hallelujah. This is what happened to Moses when he was born. In Exodus chapter 2, if you will go and read at home, all the baby boys were being killed. Hmm? And his mother decided to hide him in the river. And he commanded the sister to take care of him. And the Bible says, as you read it there, it says, this boy was a handsome to look on. And then when he was hiding there, being hidden there, one day the daughter of Pharaoh came down. To go and take a bath. And they found the baby boy crying. And the baby was crying. And he, she perceived and she said, This might, might be one of the children of the Hebrews. And the sister came running and said, Do you want me to find somebody to feed the baby for you? And the Bible says, Pharaoh's daughter agreed. And the sister ran back home, called the mother, and said, Wahala, Pharaoh's daughter has found my brother. You better come quickly so that we can save him. And the Bible says the mother came, and Pharaoh's daughter gave the son to the mother and said, Go and take care of him. And gave him letters and papers that the boy must never be touched. But this is what I love about Moshe, Moses. After growing up in the house of the king, eating all the goodies of Egypt, being entertained by everything that was found in Egypt, his brothers and his sisters were suffering. 
Huh? Now, one day he just said, let me just go around to see what is happening. Kante, outside, he was an Egyptian. But inside, he was a Jew. He was a Hebrew. Then he went around seeing what was happening. And anyway, we was walking around, walking around. He found two people fighting. An Egyptian and an Israelite, a Hebrew. He killed the Egyptian. Why? Because of the Hebrew that is inside. And then he, that one ran away. And he hid the body in the sand. After some time, one day again, he went around just walking, looking and seeing what was going on. And when he was going around looking and seeing what was going on, now he find a Hebrew and a Hebrew fighting. He was very much tatahu bazalwan. Why are you fighting? Huh? Hinyo kono khatisa satan lilwa na katsila ye. Are, it is your job to aechi. Onyo kore dira se lao si dirile mwe khipita. You killed one and he hid him under the sand. So you want to do also to us what you have done to the Egyptian. And Moses realized my story is known. If Pharaoh can know about this, I'll be in trouble. And he ran away. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now when he ran away, Hantimu kitimo o au kitimang. The running that he is running. The running that he is running is leading him to suffering. And when he was suffering, he started working as a shepherd, tending for sheep. Remember, this man is from the king's palace, eh? huh? the house of the king, eating rice and red and yellow and everything. And now he has run away. He is in the bush now. He is following sheep. Hmm? He is taking care of them. Hallelujah. And when he is busy taking care of them. Uh, that one who knew his destiny. I mean the creator of heaven and earth. Found him in the bush. And he said the running that you have run. Has made you to come and find me. Now is the time that I have to tell you. What you have to do with your life. Your destiny now has come boy. You must go back to where you come from. And take my people out of bondage. If Moshe didn't run. He was supposed to be staying in the king's palace. And he was never going to find out about his own destiny. So now you are in that situation today, running. It's because you have to find your destiny. Amen. You will find your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Amen. Moshe, Moses, Abujisha, Uraki Fita, Kitariki Wenaman. Reinamoke, here, we know who God is. Am I right? Somewhere, somehow, we have heard about him. Somewhere, somehow, we have heard the gospel being preached. But still, in that knowledge that we have, we don't want to believe in him. The road to your destiny is not a swift road. It's not a smooth road. It's not a good road. The road to your destiny has got thorns. Has got spikes, nails, stones. Everything you can think about is there. Snakes to beat you. Scorpions. Everything that can hurt you. That can make you to decide I'm no longer going forward. But let me tell you child of God. The problem that you are, you are having today. Is taking you to your own destiny. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do not forget where you are coming from. If you do not forget where you are, getting, you are coming from. 
is then that you will be able to find your destiny. People who are seeking for their destinies are people who don't forget where they are coming from. And at the end of the day, they get their own destiny. Eh? Can you tell the person that is close to you, don't forget where you are coming from. Don't forget where you are coming from. This is what Moses did. The Bible says this is the thing that makes me happy. This Moshe who was running, God spoke to him face to face. There was never anybody that God spoke with face to face. The running man speaking with God face to face. Hmm? Let me tell you, in your running, if you can allow God to help you, you will find your destiny. In your problem, if you can allow God to help you, you will find your destiny. In that sickness that you are in, if you allow God to be the one to heal you, you will find your destiny. Everything that happens to us, Bazalwane, is leading us to our destiny as long as we run towards God. The issue is we don't run towards God, we run away from God. If somebody wants to know about his or her own destiny, he must run towards God. There is nobody who knows about your destiny except God. Let's speak about Joseph. Genesis chapter 40. When Joseph was still a little boy, the Bible says he was dreaming dreams. And the brothers called him a dreamer. To an extent that when he goes to visit them, when they went out with the flocks, they will just say, here comes the dreamer. Because always, always he was telling them about dreams. I dreamed, I saw. I dreamed, I saw. I dreamed, I saw. Now because of all these dreams that he was dreaming and seeing, Hatred developed in the brothers or in his own brothers. They hated him. Because some of the dreams that he was having, they could tell what they mean even though they were not telling him. He will dream them working and his own will rise and theirs will bow down. Now they started realizing this boy is making himself better than us. So one day when the father sent it to him to go and check on them, they say, here comes the dreamer. And they seized him. They placed him inside a pit. But one of the brothers, when he saw the Amalekites coming, he said, no. What is it that will make us happy if we can kill our own blood? Let us I'll take him out and we sell him to these people. Maybe he'll go somewhere else and be a servant there or be a slave there. What is it that you are learning? Can you see that without your troubles you can never get your destiny? Without your problem you can never get your destiny. Seriously. Ah. Pella, I was sitting one day, I was reading the Bible, and I was reading. So I was thinking, it's like every man that will become a big man of God will have trouble first. Mm. Everyone that is supposed to be a leader or be something must have matata first. And after matata, that's where the anointing will start working. Yes. Huh? Yes. This boy was placed inside a the pit. They wanted when the rain falls in, the water will keep him right there inside. And one of the brothers said, no. Let's just sell him. They didn't know. They were fulfilling one of the dreams that he told them. It was taking long. But one day, 
the dream was fulfilled in him and when he was in jail somebody dreamed a dream again and after somebody dreamed he explained the dream and when that somebody went out he then spoke about him when he was out or there is somebody in jail there he can interpret so go and call him he will come and interpret when he was taken out of jail joseph started walking the steps of his destiny because when he reached there he explained what what was supposed to happen there's going to be hunger in the whole earth so when there is hunger when there is drought so my king we have to plow and when we plow we have to put some of the food in the barns and you know we have to save we have to do this we have to do this and when the king looked at this man he found that this man has got a reasoning capacity and the intelligence and everything that he is searching for and there is no other person that I can place in this job because you are the one who is explaining take it let it be your job do whatever you are explaining to me hallelujah that day joseph was starting to climb the steps of his destiny The Bible says his brothers one day came to search for food because they heard that there is food that side. The Bible says, says when Joseph saw his brothers he was very much touched and cried. The Bible said he even go back and he went and cried. Why? Because they didn't even recognize him that he was the one they sold the other time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me tell you children of God I want to finish. If you find your destiny this enemy that is after you each and every day will never recognize you. If you find your destiny all this stuff that you are meeting along they will never come to you again. When they see you they will have to run. If you find your destiny you don't struggle when you do things you don't go around searching for things things go around searching for you if you have found your destiny you don't search for promotion promotion searches for you if you have found your destiny Everything that you have ever dreamed of in life will come running searching for you. Searching where is this sister? Barley nyaka man we are searching for this sister. What's the name of this? We don't even know her name. But she's like this and this. But if we can show you maybe the picture you'll understand. You know why? It is because you have found your destiny. If you found your destiny it means you have passed your exam hmm during the time of examination ba pulusa ba banji ba zalwane christians they go back aba si what is just this exam you have to pass this one ya maremato has paid the last one if you pass this one is over ah huh? Look at these people that I'm talking about I'm just giving you an example so that you can understand. There is no destiny wonderful beautiful destiny without challenge first. There is no beautiful wonderful life enjoyment in life unless otherwise you are doing it the wrong way but without challenges first. If you can go and speak with successful people in business that have money the right way they will tell you it was tough in the beginning but now everything is fine. If you can go and ask other men of God that are big in ministry or big in whatever they are doing they will tell you hey it was tough in the beginning but now ah oh. Hallelujah yeah. Hallelujah yeah. You know when you speak to somebody who has been through something 
You know that when this person speaks to you, speaks to you because he's got experience and the spirit of the Lord is upon him and because there is experience and the spirit of the Lord, then things start to work according to the way that God wants them to work. His destiny, the destiny of this person, even if you can stop, try to stop him, this person is unstoppable in English. Even if you can try to block a person who has found his destiny, this person is unblockable. Even if you can try to witch this person that has found their destiny or his destiny in Christ, this person is unwitchable. Even if you can try to kill a person that has found his or her destiny in Christ, this person is unkillable. The issue here is you must find your destiny. Hold on to your destiny. We must find our destiny today. Hallelujah. We've been writing so many exams. We failed exams. We failed. But this one, we must pass it. And I know if we can pass this one, if we can pass this examination, if we can pass this temptation, if we can pass this test, tomorrow we are going to find our destiny. And when we find our destiny, I'm telling you, we are unstoppable. Let me ask you something. You will love though. What is it that you can do to something like me? To somebody like me? When you come to me and you say you are ugly, I say thank you. When you come to me and you say, you know what? When you are working, I say thank you. So now, if somebody can come and say those type of words to you, you will be angry the whole night. Do you know why? You haven't found your destiny. Small, small, small things, they make you angry. Eh? Lipe, lipe, nelino ipitela namu. Today we were in church and Muzalwana just passed you by. The Muzalwana didn't see you. Maybe Muzalwana was having his own problems. He was thinking or whatever. I don't know. And the Muzalwana passes you. Says Joy is an Peter. So says Joy is not an Peter. Just passes me by like this. Something is not right. I'll show you next time. This is our problem. As our Christians, let me tell you, when you want to reach your destiny, you must focus in your dream. The one that God gave you. Even if it's not right, I believe in Joseph's flight. Joseph didn't even know that one day he's going to be ruler and he's going to be manager of managers. I don't think so. He was just dreaming. Like a young person dreaming to be uh, a professional athletic, athletic or a professional soccer player, professional whatever and whatever. He was just dreaming. And when he was dreaming, he decided to tell the dreams to the brothers. Hmm? Not knowing that telling dreams to the brothers will make him to reach his destiny so fast. Very fast. Hey. That problem you are having today is making you to get your destiny so fast. I will tell you why I say so. If you didn't have that problem, sorry visitors, you were not supposed to be here today. If you can ask them, all of them, they say they want to one-on-one. -on -one. I'm just giving an example by you. All others, all of us here, we have heard one thing or the other. I'm trying to make it seem like I'm not a shit. 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 I'm not a Eh? Kau fela gari chabela ntongye mudimo. 
ke ka le baka la re ne rena le mathata and when we reached there we found the men of god and the men of god prayed for us after two, three days we found out no my life has changed it's better i stay in this place And when you decide to stay in that place and the word of God is being taught unto you day in and day out that's where you will start to advance and find your destiny. You must remember for you to find your destiny your heart must be changed. Number two, the spirit of the Lord must be upon you. Number three, you must never forget where you are coming from. Number four, you must never forget your dreams. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you ask the person that is do you know your destiny? I'm going to speak about the last person now. I want to finish. Thank you Jesus. I want to speak about Joshua. The son of Nun. Numbers chapter 14 verse 6 to 9. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephuna, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and spoke to all the congregation. In other words, that's after all the other spies have spoken and spoke about no, 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 no. Let's not do it and everything. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, the land we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord no fear the people of the land for they are our bread their protection has departed from them and the Lord is with us do not fear them hallelujah hallelujah do you hear what these boys are saying this Joshua Joshua was one of the spies that were sent to go and spy a land. When all others came to say negative things, Joshua and Caleb are the ones that said, no, we have to go there. God has promised us that we will take over the land that flows with milk and honey. And as we look at those people, uh -uh, their protection has gone away from them. So what we have to do, we don't have to fear them. Let us go and take over. Let us go and take over. If God is with us, let us not fear anything. If God is with us, let us not rebel against what God has told us. This is what Joshua is saying. Remember God has promised that they are going to a land flowing with milk and honey. So now they have reached that place, they must possess the land. Now, because we've got different mindset, those ones, when they looked, they saw different things. But Joshua and Caleb, when they looked at the people, they saw people who have been defeated already. They saw people who cannot fight for themselves. They saw people who don't have protection. What they have to do is to hold on to the words that God has told them so that they can go and possess the land. Say hallelujah. When you want to reach your destiny, you must have the right mindset. Hold on to what God has told you in the beginning. You cannot stand when you have forgotten what God told you in the beginning. Close your ears and remind yourself what God has told you. I believe enough is enough. Amen. We have to find our destinies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's over with our diseases today. It's over with our problems today. It's over with our troubles today. They will hear about our God. They will hear what 
God is going to do in us today. They will hear the changes that are going to come in our lives. They will hear the foundations that God is going to change today. They will hear about the directions that God is changing today. Why? Because we are supposed to reach our destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you? Are you ready to reach your destiny? Are you ready to take over your destiny? Everything that you are meeting right now along the way is telling you something. 